So you just got the ultimate Tudor Mathery for Blender. You have no experience with Blender, but you still want to use the rig. No problem. So the first step is to move the ultimate Tudor Mathery's blend file to a folder on your computer. Now let's move on to the next step. Let's click Edit, then go to Preferences. Now go to File Paths, and under Asset Libraries, click on this plus sign and navigate to the folder where you have the 2D matrix Dublin file saved. Now, just click on Add Asset Library. After that, you can close the Preferences window, then hover over this corner, right click, and click on Vertical Split. Then, left click to Confirm, and click on this icon to change this new editor to an Asset Browser. Now, hover over the 3D viewport and press A to select everything, then X followed by a left click to confirm deleting every object in the scene. Back to the Asset Browser, search for 2D Math Rig in the search box and drag and drop this 2D Math Rig into the scene. Now uncheck this checkbox to get rid of the clutter, then press Alt-R, Alt-G and Alt-S to reset its transformation. Now from the Outliner, select 2D Math Rig and here switch Object Mode to Pose Mode. Firstly, if all of these controllers are a bit overwhelming to you, you can turn off any collection or sub-collection which you're not using at the moment by going to Object Data Properties and clicking on the eye icon next to the name of the collection which you want to turn invisible. If you want to make it visible again, just click on the closed eye icon this time. You can even view a single collection at a time by clicking the star next to it to make it solo. Now here are some shortcuts which you need to know. Left click to select or confirm, right click to cancel or to rotate, G to grab and move, and S to scale. Now select this controller and move it around to change the shape of the mouth or rotate it to change the emotion. Yeah, it's really that simple. But if you want even more customizability, well, see these curve controllers. You can use them to change the shape of the mouth and the tongue as if they were curves themselves. So, ultimate customizability. These two are the teeth controllers. You can move them to, of course, move the teeth, rotate them to rotate the teeth. But if you you press R and then X twice, it'll give them some sort of perspective, like you're looking at the teeth from the top or the bottom. You can scale them too, by the way. See the switch? If you click on it and move it to the right, it'll activate the F reshape. So you'll use this whenever your character says F or V or something like that. And if you want to transform this shape, just click on the FV controller and transform that. This controller on the bottom is a tongue master controller and it allows you to transform the tongue as a a hole instead of having to move all of its main curve controllers. Same goes for this bone, which controls the outline and the outline only. But if you don't want to control each part of the mouth individually and instead want to transform all of the mouth at once, well you can use the master controller. If you want to lip sync to some audio, you probably want to be able to listen to that audio. So change the asset browser to video sequencer and from the add menu, click on sound and from the file viewer, find your audio file. Next, go to playback and check audio scrubbing so you can listen to your audio as you move the play it around. Okay, back to Rick. Whenever you want to insert a new keyframe, click on every bone you want to assign this new keyframe to. Again, to select, click the left mouse button. But if you want to select some specific bones, after selecting the first one, hold down shift on the keyboard, then select the other ones. And if you want to select every bone, the shortcut for that is A on the keyboard. Now that you have your bone selected, press I on the keyboard to insert a new keyframe. And to change the current frame, you just move the playhead around. To delete a certain keyframe from the timeline, select that keyframe. Then press X, and from the menu, click on delete keyframes. Just remember, you first change how the mouth looks, and then you insert the keyframe. Now here are some tips for you. If you click on that X button on the top right, it'll activate X axis mirror, which will keep your pose symmetrized all the time. Also see this button in the toolbar, that is the breakdowner. If you hold it, the push and relax tools will also be revealed. You can select whichever of these three tools you want, and to use them, you'll have to select the bones which you want to use these tools on, and then hold down the left mouse button and drag your mouse to the right or to the left. Also, if you want to do easing, there is a graph editor, but if you want to take a simpler approach, you can right-click your keyframe, and from here you can change both the interpolation mode and also the easing mode. If you want to change the frame rate of your animation, you can easily do that by going to the output properties and clicking on frame rate to change it to whatever frame rate you want to use. You can even use a custom frame rate. You can also change the frame range. By default, Blender animations end at frame 250, but you 
can change that by clicking on it and dragging your mouse to the left or to the right. You can also change the starting frame, but I recommend that you don't do that unless you know what you're doing. Now that your animation is done and your frame rate is set, you probably want to export your animation so that you can use it in your own animation or video editing software. So go to Render Properties tab and change the render engine to Workbench. Then scroll down to Film and check Transparent. So your exported video or image sequence will have transparency. Scroll down even more and at the bottom you'll see Color Management. Click on it and change the View Transform to Standard. Now you need to add a camera to the scene. So go to the Add menu and click on Camera. Press Alt R to reset its rotation and G and then Z to move it upwards. Click on this camera icon to toggle the camera view and see what the camera is seeing. If your mouth doesn't fit inside the camera, just move the camera around. Maybe you should move it upwards or maybe you should move it in another direction. After you did that, back to the output properties, you can change the X and Y resolutions. Now scroll down to Output and change the file format to FFmpeg video if you want your animation to be rendered as a video. I'm going to do that. There are some reasons not to do it, but I'm still going to stick with that because if you're going to export it as an image sequence, your video editing or animation software, which you're going to import your mouth into, needs to have the option to import image sequences. So I'm going to stick with FFmpeg video and now I'm going to go down to encoding. I click on that and down here you can see that the video codec is set to H264. You want to change that to PNG so that your video will have support for RGBA with the A standing for alpha. So click on it. A little note here, if you want your exported video to have audio too, under audio, change the audio codec to whatever audio codec you want. AAC is a good option, but you might want to choose another one. And the only thing left is to change the output directory. Now just go to the top and click on render, render animation. And that's it! Congratulations! I hope this video was useful to you. Goodbye!